Okay, so today I'll show some of our recent work uh, on shape estimation of deformable objects. We recently started working in this area. Um, so here is one of our first results. Uh, for the, the outline of this talk, I'll show some motivating examples, present the main challenge. Um, then I'll talk about the key idea of uh, that, that we are using for this work, which is based around this random matrix uh, density representation. I'll show some of the details of the methods, uh, results, and some future directions. So the motivation of uh, deformable object shape estimation is the, the plethora of applications which are out there uh, in robotics automation. Um, for example, in sp space robotics applications, uh, here is a picture of a solar panel uh, and there is, a, there is a problem of dust accumulation which is commonly found. So, uh, one of the uh, ways to prevent this is, hey, can we cover this with um, some uh, cloth or things like that? Um, let me go back and I'm not sure why this is going forward. The other applications that we have looked in the past um, from advanced manufacturing applications, such as wire hardness, uh, cable assembly, uh, cloth folding uh, using robots, uh, we see that uh, a lot uh, shape estimation is can be quite beneficial there. Uh, some of the traditional applications of uh, skeletal tracking, uh, where you can represent each of these joints as the connected um, objects, and that becomes like a collectively a deformable object. Um, so there are a lot of applications, motivating applications uh, for this, uh, and the shape estimation can be useful for actually manipulating uh, these different objects in various different application areas like medical robotics, uh, manufacturing, and so on. So um, before going into the main challenge, uh, I would actually like to uh, show a bit of classification. So typically um, 1D and 2D are the classifications that I've seen in the literature. And by 1D here, we mean um, elongated deformable objects, uh, which are typically characterized by when you have the length of the object much wider than its width, for example, wires and hoses and so on. Um, now, given the uh, point cloud data of uh, these objects, such as from RGBD cameras, uh, the, the challenge is to essentially estimate the shape um, of these objects. And uh, we started uh, looking into this problem and a couple of questions that we started exploring is, what are the different ways of representing uh, these deformable objects, that is the modeling? And then once we uh, figure out which model is suitable, then what are the uh, different ways of estimating the parameters of uh, the model? So taking a deeper dive into the literature, um, there are mass spring models, which are commonly found in literature. Um, some linked capsule with uh, physics simulators. So for example, if you have a rope, you can actually uh, divide them as a chain linked capsule. Um, and the literature uses a physics simulator attached with that. Um, finite element methods are also commonly used. Uh, now, this uh, literature uh, typically solves the problem as a registration problem. Uh, meaning that they have uh, some form of physics simulator where they can get the uh, model of the object from, and then you have a sensor data, and then you essentially try to register and find the point correspondences using commonly used methods such as iterative closest point methods, current point drift methods, and so on. Um, other popular methods um, out there in literature, um, we use active contours, snake uh, type of representation. Um, 
the graph based methods where uh, we are using connected line segments and then that's used with the filtering uh, to estimate the parameters basic curves uh, nerves are another commonly used representation and so on uh, now for for the for the solution that uh, we came up with for this problem, uh, I call it as a sensor-based method. So it's not using any physics simulator or a, a priori known model of the object. Um, it is focused on elongated deformable objects. Um, we model that as a chained ellipse. So you have a bunch of ellipses put together side by side and they are chained using uh, B spline curve representation. Now, the key idea here is to um, represent this ellipse using a random matrix model, uh, which is essentially the inspiration for this came through um, uh, an extended object tracking literature uh, where uh, such models are commonly used um, to represent something called as the extent of the object. Um, and we, we adapted uh, these models and created uh, models for these elongated deformable uh, objects and came up with estimation uh, algorithms around that. So this method um, can actually handle self-intersections. Uh, I, I will show what uh, that means. So if you have a row which is inter intersecting with itself and so on, so um the estimation we can still estimate the shape in such uh, cases um the method can be used when both the shape and the length of the objects are changing um it can be useful for uh, manipulation of these deformable objects using uh, robots and as i mentioned before there is no model or uh, physics simulator required So the overview of uh, the method in three simple blocks. Uh, first one is, of course, obtain the measurement data from RGBD camera. Here are some sample configurations that we used of the rope. Uh, we obtained RGBD data of that. Um, here are some uh, configurations with the uh, self-intersection of the object. The next step is essentially we clean the data by using some standard background subtraction methods, and that gets us to uh, data like that. And then we use um, EMST type of approaches to find the connected edges and divide the data into smaller chunks that essentially gives some form of initialization as the connected uh, lines. I'll show some uh, details of this later slides. And then uh, once you have that initialization, uh, then the key uh, part here is essentially each of these clustered uh, points, they can be essentially represented using uh, these ellipses, which are parameterized as a uh, random matrix. And I'll show some math uh, related to that. Um, and then you can actually use a B spline to trace the actual curve, which gives you a global configuration of the object. And these each of these ellipses that gives you the extent of the object in this case, meaning how, what's the width at each of uh, these different points. So uh, looking at some of the details of uh, the modeling, here is a, a simple representation uh, of connected ellipses. Um, and so the elongated deformable object is uh, modeled as these chained um, ellipses, where the centers of um, these ellipses, they represent uh, the location and the spread um, of the measurements essentially um, is captured in the form of the covariance. And that, that would give you the extent or in this case, the width at, at each of these different locations. 
for um, <clears throat> for for the curve uh, for this particular work, we uh, we use V splines uh, parameterization, and for ellipses, we are uh, using this random matrix uh, model. So uh, quickly about the B spline curves, um, they are essentially uh, a B spline curve of degree D. You can uh, define that using uh, this particular equation with N uh, as the basis functions and B I as the control points. Uh, that gives you points on, on the B spline. So B I is the parameter control point that you can adjust to um, adjust your uh, to trace your uh, B spline. Uh, the, the basis functions are, are chosen using uh, some uh, standard algorithms such as uh, the Stebur's algorithm. Um, now, the uh, key idea of random uh, matrix model is as follows. So I'll spend a couple of slides talking about that and then I'll show how uh, we can adopt this uh, for for this B spline chained RMM uh, model. Uh, so from the tracking literature, if you if you have an object such as an elliptical object here, and um, you are getting bunch of point measurements, uh, this could be using RGBD data, or this could be using lidar uh, sensor, and so on. Um, so each of these points, uh, positions, Y, I, um, they, you, you can, one can write down a measurement model for this with the state X, K here being uh, the centroid of the object. Uh, if the object is moving, then it could be, uh, it could include velocities, acceleration, so kinematic state essentially. And W, K is, is the noise, uh, which is Gaussianly distributed, zero mean, and so on. Um, now, if, and that's, that's from the uh, uh, traditional tracking literature, um, you can add uh, an extent to the state of the object. And by extent, uh, what I mean is essentially uh, the, essentially the spread of uh, the, uh, these measurements or how big, in this case, how big this ellipse is, the major and minor axis and so on. Um, and those actually can be included into uh, into into the state, uh, and that then becomes an extended object tracking. Uh, now, given these position uh, measurements of each of these points, uh, one can write a likelihood function of collection of all those points uh, represented in the set capital Y K as the multiplication of these normal Gaussian distributions. Uh, with the mean at h x k and uh, the covariance of x k. Now the key idea here is that if I uh, if I want to capture the shape of uh, this object, uh, we can introduce a couple of more measurements, which are functions of uh, these position measurements of each of these points, and those being the center, uh, which is just the averaged position. Um, and the spread matrix, um, which is given by uh, this particular equation. Now this capital YK bar is, is a ran random matrix and uh, that can capture the spread of uh, uh, these measurements which are coming from this extended object. Now um, this likely measurement likelihood function of all these points, um, represented in the set capital YK, uh, we can actually factorize this. And this, this, is, um, this is important uh, because we can write this uh, likelihood function as a normal density function of um, the average position measurements, which is YK bar, um, and a uh, Wishart density uh, of this random matrix capital YK bar. Um, so since uh, this YK bar is capturing the spread of the object or the extent of the object, and also it is a random matrix, um, there is a density associated with it, uh, and it can be modeled as something called as the Wishart density. 
uh, which uh, can be parameterized using this particular formula given here. Uh, so if you have a d-dimensional symmetric positive definite random matrix X, then you can write its Wishart density uh, using this formula where ETR is the exponential trace operator, gamma is the gamma function and so on. But the important point to note here is that it is essentially parameterized using this XK, which is the covariance and NK um, parameter, which are number of points um, in, in this object. So now we can uh, essentially apply this idea to uh, for, for the deformable objects of the elongated shapes uh, in the following sense. Um, so out of the chained uh, ellipses, I'm going to consider just a uh, single ellipse. And as we saw a couple of slides back, I can write um, the likelihood function for all uh, these point measurements coming from that particular ellipse as the multiplication of normal distribution. To capture the extent, uh, I can introduce these additional measurements as the center uh, and the spread matrix CK bar, which we can parameterize uh, using the normal distribution of uh, the averaged position measurements of the points and the Wishart density of the spread matrix. Um, now, if I collect uh, multiple such uh, likelihood functions for each of these ellipses, which are given in this uh, by phi in this particular formula, and then I multiply them, uh, I weigh them essentially equally and take the summation, then I can get a likelihood function for uh, the entire uh, elongated object for all the uh, measurements contained in this capital set uh, Z. Um, now, the, the other, uh, and, and essentially that will give us the measurement likelihood for all these uh, ellipses. Um, sorry about that. If I uh, look at the parameters theta, um, they contain um, LK, which are the number of points in each of these uh, ellipses that belong to each of these ellipses. CK is the uh, essentially the center or the point on the B spline curve. So if I essentially enforce the uh, mean of uh, the average points on the B spline, then I can, I can actually reconstruct these ellipses on the B spline itself and a covariance sigma K, which uh, can give us the, uh, which can give us the spread of uh, each of these ellipses. So the problem here then becomes after we model or be uh, elongated object as a chain uh, RMM is to come up with these parameters um, such that this measurement likelihood is maximized. And to do that, uh, we use an expectation maximization algorithm from uh, estimation, uh, which has two steps. With the expectation step, uh, we can actually assign the number of measurements that belong to each of these ellipses. So it's essentially um, doing some form of a clustering. Um, for the maximization step, we take the log of the likelihood function, uh, which essentially then becomes a function of these parameters theta. Um, and then if we, if we uh, take the partial derivative of the log likelihood with respect to these parameters, equate them to zero, then I can solve for um, the, I can get the equations for each of these parameters. Um, one of them uh, being the uh, B parameter, which is which are the parameters of uh, the B spline uh, control points, and the other one being the sigma that gives me the spread of uh, of uh, these uh, measurements. 
And then once I have uh, these different parameters, I can go back to the Wishart density uh, of the random matrix to essentially come up with uh, the spread. And using these B points, uh, we can then estimate uh, how the B spline looks like, uh, which is fitted to uh, this point uh, cloud. Uh, there is some initialization process that we have to perform before we go into uh, this expectation maximization uh, step. Uh, as I mentioned, we do a simple background subtraction first, uh, and then we use uh, this EMST algorithm where to find uh, these long uh, connected paths, we use this bread for search uh, method uh, if there is an intersection, uh, then we can get the common vertex. Uh, now, along each of these uh, paths, we split them, split the data into smaller chunk uh, of uh, the segments, and uh, which then can essentially be connected to get an initial graph uh, that can be used uh, for the as an initialization to the EM algorithm for estimating the shape. Uh, we validated this uh, on a couple of different examples. Uh, so the first experiment that we did uh, used all these six different configurations of the rope um, for measuring the accuracy of the estimation. Uh, we use this intersection over union metric. Uh, which essentially computes the uh, intersection of uh, the estimated shape and the ground truth uh, over the union of uh, the, the estimated shape and, and the ground truth. Um, so one being the most accurate, zero being the least accurate um, in, in that particular metric. Here are the estimation results. This is the uh, initialization of uh, with the data clustering and initial connection of the points. Um, the figure on the right shows the fitted ellipses with the random matrix and uh, a B spline uh, curve. So it gives you a uh, uh, global configuration of uh, the object with the B spline and uh, locally, you can get the extent of each of these objects using uh, using the random matrix uh, represented as ellipse. We compared this with one of um, the existing methods uh, from the literature as well. Uh, here are some uh, results with IU being um, uh, quite decent results with uh, with with the uh, amount of noise uh, and occlusions that you get in the sensor data. Um, the other nice thing is uh, we can actually use this method for when, when, the, uh, when the object is actually uh, moving as well or is being manipulated. So the, the result on the previous slide was for a single snapshot of the image. Now um, you can actually use this recursively to estimate the shape uh, at various different iterations of the image. Um, the execution time um, for, and we, we tried this, I'll show a video right after this, uh, where, where we can uh, visually see the uh, estimation results, but here are some of the execution times and uh, the accuracy metrics. Uh, which is actually quite uh, quite nice uh, given the uh, noise that we get from the data. So it is the video where the rope is being manipulated on the left hand side. You can see the raw data from RGBD sensor. On the right hand side top, uh, you can see uh, the background subtraction results and on the top, sorry, bottom right, you can see the estimation itself. Here the object is being uh, stretched, so change in length and so on. Here is a particular uh, video for the assembly. So now you attach a different object and the method is able to actually capture that and 
estimate the result, estimate the shape of uh, this additional elongated object and so on. So with that, I will conclude my talk. Um, here, uh, we explored the tools commonly used in extended object tracking literature and for the shape estimation of the deformable object. Uh, for this particular work, uh, we, uh, we, we explored results for the 1D uh, uh, deformable objects. Uh, we are currently uh, exploring the utility of these tools with dynamic models. So what if you have uh, data uh, using which you can learn uh, the actual, uh, actual model of the deformable uh, object itself and use uh, the measurement likelihood in the Bayesian estimation context. Um, and these methods we think can be uh, useful for various different shape control um, applications or soft robotics applications. Uh, here is my not so old group. A lot of uh, the students are already graduated, uh, but Gang Yao is one of the main contributors of uh, this work. He graduated uh, recently and um, is joining at UB Tech in California as a robotics engineer. So with that, thank you all. If you have any questions, I would take them. <laughs>